Man, oh man, here we go again, guys. And this week, we are back with some wagon action. That's right, it's a little noisy out there. So we're gonna close this door, but then go work outside where it's noisy. That way we keep the noise out of the outside, cause that just made sense. <laughs> so we got her where we're pretty happy with it. Fixed some stuff, and there's still a little small amount of stuff that we had found at the end of the last video on the main channel. Uh, the main thing, we didn't make it home from our junkyard trip. Oh no, we uh we got left. Uh, we were, what, what, how do you say that? Something about stranded water or something. I can't remember how the saying goes. Uh, kind of find out our alternator took a crap. Uh, so yesterday I did pull off the alternator, ran it over to the alternator starter shop and our remanufactured alternator here that I had them convert to internally regulated self-exciting one wire setup, the stator was toasted in. And uh, come to find out he didn't have any new staters in stock, but he broke apart a couple of used ones and we now have a used stator, but it was like a $10 repair kind of thing and he claims it's working. So we're gonna put it back on here, see uh, if we can't get her fired up, make sure she's charging. And then once she's charging, we'll pull her in the shop where we have other stuff to do. Y'all see me put this alternator on and off about 300 times. And I keep telling you, and I tell you, and I tell you, guys, shake down miles. You do a new build, you gonna have some problems. You know, I say that, when I built the international pickup, the C900, I put it on the road and I don't remember ever fixing a damn thing. I was just on point when I built that, uh, but I was, I think, pretty lucky. Cause just like this, alternator going out with, you know, 150 miles on it. What's the chances? We get that put together. Uh, we need to tighten that up, but I gotta put a little washer spacer in there. Uh, no, ah, uh, dang it. I had to loosen our bolt cause I couldn't get that big bolt back out of there. So now, Try and get that started with that freaking washer. Come on. You wanna be difficult? I can do it difficult. I ain't scared. Don't embarrass me in front of my friends. All right, now you're embarrassing me. Pudding can't even put an alternator on his car. Yes, I can. Ha, see there? That's how you know you're angry when you start talking between your teeth. You're so mad your teeth don't move. You're just, you better not do that again. Sound like my dad. Nah, my dad didn't talk between his teeth. He whispered to you. Get in here real close where just you can hear me, boy. <laughs> That's what the world needs to get straightened out. The world ain't had a Jimmy Warner thump to the back of the head. Y'all seen the size of my dad, his sausage fingers? You load that sucker up, boom, drill your head. Knock some sense clean out of you. That's what happened to me, guys. So I ain't got no brains on me. Better be careful. Nowadays, the law will be going for my dad for child abuse. Better watch your butt, dad. Yeah, right. As soon as he got out of jail, first thing he'd do is come thump me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I ain't, no, I ain't gonna press no charges, dad. Don't worry. Hat, we need to get us a very small pry bar. Oh, yes, that should do. Put that in there where we get a little tension on her. You want to just smoke this thing as tight as you can get it. Just playing guys. That was actually very hard to just barely put tension on that. Uh, you don't want to smoke that thing. I was just being goofy. Wiggle worm or wire back up in here. I like it being hid there on the back side. I can even take it around that away. Oh, that's slick. That looks good. Get the old ground back on. And I charged her a few times. She should have plenty of battery. Ha ha! Let's give her a few revs and make sure she's charging. She's charging good, running smooth. Michael Jackson smooth. <laughs> charging problem fixed. How long will this alternator or stator last? Time will tell. I made us a list of little things to do. Alternator, pad, starter, vented cap, bezel breather, vented cap. 
Previously, I talked about how a couple times them uh, the fuel filter looked empty, guys. And uh, yeah, so one thing we did last week to help was we built this little heat shield, which uh, does help because that gets hotter than heck. And that thing right there just boom helps block that. Uh, you can see she's full now. I mean, she's plumb full. But the one day that that was having trouble, uh, I come back here, pulled our vent cap, and sure enough, you could tell it was uh, pulling vacuum, just like that. So, uh, I said it should be vented, shouldn't it, or whatever. Of course, everyone was worried about me checking on that. Just gotta let air through somehow. Well, this is some type of check valve, but where's that going out to? Can't blow through it. You can suck through it. So I don't know if that's just supposed to, where it's supposed to pull air at. Take our seal off real quick. I'm pretty tempted to just drill a little hole right here next to this thing and see if uh, that don't do it. How about a 330 seconds? We just go right in there. And hopefully that gets it through to all this. And then that way if dust does somehow get in there a little bit here or there, it can't actually make it down into the gas. Perfect. All right, it'll be a little bit bigger hole than that because we ain't got nothing that'll hold that. 764 it is. Oh, she vents now. <laughs> so now we got a hole there. Guys, I'm gonna see if I can't find the proper cap for this thing. Uh, I don't mind doing this just for now, if it uh, you know helps us until our new cap comes in, but no more than a cap is. If I can find one that I know is a good vented cap, then that's what will get ordered. However, this will work kinda, sorta, until then. Redneck cap complete. Now, if you think drilling a hole in a cap to vent it's bad, just hold your britches, cause I'm about to really lose you here. Going up. Let's tear into the rear again. Look at that big old meaty girthosaurus rex right there. But put in, we done seen you do this before. I know guys, but it has to be right. There ain't no sense in spending all this money that we spent building the wagon. All the time we spent on the wagon to then drive it with crap wrong and or just not drive it period don't make no sense shake down stuff guys keep saying it but some people just don't get it some people should build something from nothing and then after spending all that time when you got five problems just don't fix the stuff just drive it as is no i encourage everyone to fix it and fix it right that's not what we're about to do here but we're gonna fix it maybe not right One set of brake pads. One half set of number two brake pads. There's the other half, second set of brake pads. Now I have a theory here, guys. And my theory plays off of the brake pad issues we've been having and our brake dragging issues actually we've been having. So y'all seen, I was having some crunching. We found the little booger weld on the wheel. Then I was having some dragging, some grunting. Well, on the last of the one videos, uh, I tapered them edges with the flap, flap attack. And I actually thought I resolved our problem. Uh, it reduced like dramatically as we drove, you know, put a hundred miles on it. And I heard the noise like, once and then once it was doing it it was doing it a lot then it cooled off again as we sat at the junk or as we were at the junkyard then on the way back uh it never even did it till i was like just right here at the house and once it does it it just does it and basically after grinding on that getting rid of it and that is such an exact fit pushing that on and off there guys i think our pads are too thick i think the spacing's right as far as the brackets everything goes on just perfect I just think it's such an exact fit 
that as we're driving and those as everything gets heated up i think it's expanding a little bit and that's when we're starting to have our issues so long story short i think we could take a little bit off a of brake pad one on each side probably just to give us a little wiggle room and we may fix our problem now these are some cheapo brake pads so if you're going to experiment that's the one to experiment on they're not hard to get on and off uh so basically what i'm saying is we got to take some material off these brake pads and i think we should just be able to take some material off of one uh one on each side should do it right because the whole thing just kind of floats so as long as there's floating room it shouldn't matter let's think about this those thread in there but then it slides so if it's maxed out i think we want to take it off the outside one not the not the caliper side the outside pad that's what we're going to try uh, this can be some redneck stuff but you know what i guarantee you ain't the first one to ever do it this will give us a uh, something to try anyhow to see if this is what the problem is i actually just talked to uncle rick about it as well and uh he said he's actually had to do this on race car stuff before uh they're all roundy round days or whatever and he said something else i may want to check is the rod length for the master cylinder underneath there just make sure that when it's returning that we ain't somehow holding a little pressure on there now i told y'all a month ago or so i was getting me a belt sander uh this one i found online just shopped around until i found the best deal but i'm not gonna lie and act like this thing was cheap but here's the reason why i went with the pricier one uh i had the porta cable one i'd got it way back in the day when it was on sale at Lowe's and it still costs you a couple hundred bucks, but by the time you get it, uh, whatever. So that thing was not very powerful, uh, but I used the fire out of it for two and a half years and uh, it ended up burning up or whatever. I was probably doing too much with it. Uh, but when you cut a lot of stuff by hand, if you're doing custom brackets and stuff, being able to clean up something with a belt sander is uh it's a game changer guys and that was something that i i've worked forever with that one then i bought that one for a couple hundred bucks back in the day and it was a game changer and then it burned up and i said i ain't gonna buy another one till i can get a good one because i just felt like i'd be wasting money again if i turn around and spit the two or 250 to get a cheaper one again uh so that's why i saved up and got that or waited to get this one uh, because I love the cheaper one, but I don't want to be replacing the cheaper one every two years. If you're planning on doing a lot of curvy brackets or you're like me, you don't like don't like cutting stuff straight, you like to do radiuses, and or if you got to cut stuff by hand with the plasma and then re uh, you want to rely on this to straighten up, I highly encourage you, if you're a fabricator, to uh, you can start off with one of the cheap ones, see if you like it, see how much you use it. Uh, but I was using the devil out of mine. Hi friends and welcome back to another episode of Put and Reviews Tools here on YouTube, the number one exclusive channel for tool reviews. Today, boy, do we have a treat for you. Today, we have the extremely fragile Grizzly Belt Sander. Here at Put and Tool Reviews, you know one of my favorite tools is the handy Milwaukee, w w walkie knife. <laughs> the handy Milwaukee knife with our optional screwdriver. What a great tool, friends. It looks like today, friends, we're gonna have a lot of oily mess on our hands. And it looks like today, friends, we're gonna have to read a little instructions. Hey, uh, Puddin', can you even read that? Hell no, I can't read it, Tony. I told you, if we're gonna keep doing tool reviews, you gotta buy me crap that I don't need instructions because you know I can't read. And every time we do this, you embarrass me. It's embarrassing. Are the cameras good? Are they good? Can we? All right. All right, friends, let's carry on with assembly. Let's carry on with assembly. Hey, Tony, can y'all cut that out? I, I don't want people to see that side of me. Okay, right here, guys, we clearly have a cup holder where you have somewhere to sit your sodi pop as you do some grinding. Very nice feature. Right here, we have the snorkel feature 
that you can install on the belt sander and you can actually do underwater belt sanding. Very nice. Holy cow, friends. We're gonna have to get this moo moo out of here. What the hell did I buy? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> After a quick glance appearance here, friends, I can now see why this box has been so heavy to move. Let's see if we can't blow her back out and get her on the table. Yeah. All right, friends. That would have been the perfect time to have a friend with an extra set of hands. Now remember everyone, a clean environment is a safe environment. Around here at Pluton's Tool Reviews, we practice safety first. Safety is awesome. All right, guys. Uh, yes, I know my fire extinguishers did that. I don't, does heat cause that to those things? I don't know, because they were all fine and then we went through them peak heat months and two dropped below one was overcharged i don't know what in the fire extinguisher stuff was going on uh i knew this was good size but i just seen a picture of it on the internet and i just read the reviews but i didn't look up any videos or any pictures of it actually in use and i'm not gonna lie i was super surprised when i just seen the size of this damn girthy thing when i opened up that box caught me a little off guard all right here we go a little assembly we ain't assembling nothing without getting the door open over here. I'm burning up. Try to get a little air flowing anyhow. Unthread the screw cap on the sanding belt table lock lever. Remove the lever and then unthread the lock bolt and flat washer from the sander. Uh-huh. I reckon we're taking this all out. Then position table trunnion. I guess that's this thing according to the pictures. So it looks like we do that onto there. Okay, I think that goes there. Guess we rely on a thread and a half to hold that. Boy, Mortsky wouldn't be happy. I'd be calling up the engineers there, putting some foot in ass. And we reinstall our lever, I think. That's from loaded, or then you can tighten that. Yeah, okay. Attach sanding belt table to the trunnion. Well, there's a lot of wiggle room in that, so we just run them down, but I don't think we snug them quite yet. I mean, that's a dust port, not a cup holder. What the hell? Guess that goes there. So even though that's not preferred, I don't really think it'd be an issue. Next, we're gonna whoo, rotate this assembly up. We got an Allen over here that just clamps this whole assembly. And I'm sure it's gonna have us align everything, but just to roughly get it in place, I'm putting our angle finder on there. And that's reading perfect, then uh, that's where we need to be. Yeah. Tighten down our little vacuum sucker tube for this end. slid over but we don't want it touching that or we'll be doing some self clearancing all right there's a pretty damn good 90 degree angle i maintain a nice gap in there about an eighth inch or so it's reading pretty damn on zero so i think that one qualifies as adjusted right here we got to do the same thing uh yeah we still ain't tightened it but yeah she was tightened down a little bit <laughs> we'll get it right and tighten it down a lot of bit how's that That's pretty close, but I got our slider thingy in here. It's set at zero, so we need this to be 90 as well if we want to use this, which we will use sometimes. We should be able to put this to this. 
and the net to that and that does not match got a gap down here so this is going to be a little tricky because we're going to have to adjust this oh no no that should be good now all that should be down in these bolts yeah that's it come on now use your noggin I was about to loosen this up. I was like, no, that ain't going to do it, is it? Hmm. Well, that's not good, guys. And that right there, if this was all machined correctly, should be pretty close, and it's not. And there's not enough adjustability in here to get this matching. If we lock that down, which this should be pretty square with this, unless this little thing's off. It's about one degree off according to this. So we could uh, we can adjust this. Basically know our mark right there is zero. If we are gonna use this thing, we just know to square it up with a square and not rely on this over here. I don't know what else to do because we ain't got no adjustability in it. It adjusts the wrong way, more or less. So that's a little annoying but we know how to work around it and we can live with it, I guess. We ain't sending it back because I ain't taking this damn thing back apart, I guarantee it. It's what we want right there. Nice true 90 degrees. Try setting that right at 90. Yep, that's just not true. Check our little slide over here and uh, yeah, that's not true neither. If we get that matching according to our square to a good 90, this side says it's a degree and a half off. So that's what we got to do, guys. Just never trust this. We'll use an angle finder to set our angles if we ever need to do the angle dangle. Come to find out there's actually bolts down here we got to tighten up that are adjustable. Uh, still, only way I can get a true 90 out of that one up there is if our square is going to rub the sanding disc, which, uh, yeah or if the, the platform is, I mean, which would be no good. So I actually set this to one degree, like I did over there, and that's how I'm squaring this up and tightening this one up, so both of them's gonna be exactly one degree off. We're gonna sand these outside since we're gonna make a big old dusty mess. Uh, I'm just gonna open this up to about a sixteenth I'm not gonna get too picky, guys. Might even go a little more. Half between a sixteenth and a eighth inch. I'm just gonna take that and lock it down. And then I'm gonna try to scribe this and I don't know if it's gonna go well. Yes, it is. I figured that may work. So maybe y'all can see right down there on the end, there's a scratch. And I can do that here on the inside edge. And basically, as we go sand these down, I'm gonna try to hit all them edges, holding it, you know, That'll help me get it as true as we can for what we're about to do. Plug her into some good power, get our mask on, and we're gonna go for it. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, that seemed to work really well. That's basically how you instantly install about 10,000 miles on your uh, brake pads. Now we are desperate right, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're desperate right now. We need some 5 8 heater hose. I don't have any, except we just found some right here. This is gonna be some redneck chafe wrap is what it's gonna be. First, we're gonna clean this baby up with our Get Gone Degreaser by the Sweet Potato. We're gonna take this old heater hose from looking nasty and beat to pretty and neat. You spray that sucker down and just stroke on it. Don't do that. Don't, do not do that to your hose. Spray your heater hose down and just scrub on it with your paper towel. How's that? Now that looks clean enough to go underneath the car to get dirty to me. A get gone degreaser is good stuff. If you want that cleaning product or any of these other great cleaning products by the Sweet Patina, 
just be sure to head to sweetpatina.com. Use that old promo code on the screen. Next, we're gonna take the Harbor Freight shears. Oh, that's a good sign. May clean the outside, but that didn't do nothing for the inside, did it? Split her down the middle like a taco. Then we actually can clean out this inside, can't we? Now what I'm worried about and what I'm trying to do here is I'm gonna try to sleeve this uh, because the pan hard bar mounts on this side and as it's down there, I think, yeah, probably right there where that little bit of, right there's where it's rubbing. This down here kind of gets close, so I'm just gonna see what I can get away with here. We call that right there the Chafe Wrap Supreme. Try getting past that sucker. <laughs> Not today, Satan. Not today. That right there will probably work. In fact, I think we can trim just a hair off that. I think that right there will be good. I would have thought about this earlier, I would have got some chafe wrap for this, but uh, I did not think of it earlier. Shoot, that right there is the ultimate chafe wrap, ain't it? I slapped the booty all back together. Y'all seen that a couple times. And now, we're actually going to hop up here and disconnect this little battery again. And that's because we're actually going to uh, pull the starter off this rig. Now, some of y'all... We're speculating a weak starter, and uh, I was too. I guess I didn't say it in the video, but let's not forget that I turned the uh, starter into a supercharger. What was that? Yeah, that's when we were test driving and the wire fell down and hit the power and kicked in the starter as we were going about 45 and it spun it to who knows what, and somehow it held together. So I was speculating we might be having a little starter issues as well. I know some people said grounds. Uh, I'm not, I don't know guys. I'm leaning more towards starter. And then of course we know we had a weak battery too, uh, come to find out, because we knew it wasn't charging. And then another uh, theory people were having was heat soak, uh, which I don't disagree with. I mean, it is close to the exhaust down there, except uh, it shouldn't have enough time to heat it up that much, guys. It was doing it at the old shop. It did it here. I mean, you could let the thing run for 20 seconds, shut it off, and then it was having the hard start. And that exhaust ain't getting that hard, that starter that hot in 20 seconds. It just ain't gonna happen. I ordered a starter. Uh, it's here. That was one I had on the shelf back in the day anyhow, so I don't even know how long it was. It was new. There shouldn't have been issues with it other than me trying to shell it and blow it up. <laughs> So either way, we are gonna put a different starter on this rig. Before we go up with it, we'll get our cable off from up here. It's pretty easy to get to. I think we got enough slack on them wires for the starter solenoid. We can get them after we drop it. Man, that starter is all there. Sucker's heavy. Oh man, grab the wrong size. Oh, there's old bad man pajama. I don't remember them being so heavy. Teeth and everything still look good on this thing. I still can't believe uh, that starter or that uh, flex plate did it, you know, mess up somehow when that happened. Now, let me show you what we're going back with. Uh, something considerably smaller. This is a starter from a uh, like 96 to 98 Chevy uh, Vortec truck. Went with the Vortec engine or whatever. Uh, quite a bit smaller, as you can see. They're supposed to be pretty good. Uh, I don't know that I've ever ran one on any of my things. Uh, one thing I did notice was it does not have the stud for the wire that's gonna feed our coil up there to help power go to other stuff. Uh, so as long as we're still getting enough power 
to our HEI for it to fire up. Uh, it shouldn't matter as long as she goes in there and works. Now being smaller, that should get even more distance between it and the exhaust, uh, which should help if that is gonna be an issue as it continues to run more. And yeah, we'll just see how she does, I reckon. Step one, drop your washer in your nut. Step two, don't be a punk. Try again. Step three, tighten it. Uh, this is metric, apparently. Step 12, figure out how to get that wire on there. Once you get that wire done, let's bolt her back up into place. We need to make a Harbor Freight trip soon where we can get us a rolly cart, guys, because not having somewhere to sit tools sucks. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Our wire to feed the coil, I just laid it back and I taped it onto that little harness there, uh, which looks perfectly fine. She should be ready for a little testing. Hooked her battery back up. <laughs> that starter sounds a hell of a lot happier than the old one did. I know this battery's sitting charged really good, but it was charged earlier when I started that. That thing's just, mm, it's got a little more ass to it, even though it's about a third of the size. Yep, oh, that sounded really good. Got a lot more room between that sucker too now. All in all, I just think that was all a smart decision. There's Nathan pulling up in the man van. That means he's been packing some orders. Guys, we've been getting those things out. We're a week ahead on content, so this video won't come out until it was actually happening a week ago. But yeah, we had Indigenous People Day yesterday. So when I got up at six in the morning and took the stuff up to the post office at 6.30, they were closed. Well, that's pretty well it. Uh, I want to build our breather next, but first I got to do something and show y'all. Let's pull number one spark plug. No. Yes. Pull number one spark plug looks great. Uh, exactly what you want to see in there. Pull a little chrome jobber off here. And we're going to reach back there and pull that off. And where's our little helper switch? Hook our helper switch up to the starter solenoid, then our battery, of course. And I'm gonna come right here and put my finger plugger into number one hole. We're starting to hit compression stroke right there. Give her a little smoochy. And that should turn it enough where it should be that piston coming up for sure. Gonna take our uh, uh, boroscope and go down in there where we can see the piston, which I can see uh, pretty good right there. I'm gonna put a ratchet here on our uh, balancer up front and we're gonna see if we can't spin our motor. I don't know if y'all can see that coming up or not. Starting to go back down, so I'm gonna take it backwards some. Went a little too far there. I, sit, I stopped when it was floating. I'm gonna try to mark in between the middle of this. Right now that marks right at the bottom. Took her a little backwards. Now let's go forward and see if we can find where she's floating. I know this is kind of funky, but uh, I'm trying to find the exact middle here. Going up, going up, going up. It's floating. I'm going to show y'all what I'm looking at here. I've done this before, except I want to say Bill and Slick was helping me. I was trying to watch the boroscope. I don't remember. I remember Slick turning on it. And basically the concern was our timing marks down there. I don't know how well y'all can see that, but I'd marked 
where I wanted uh, zero to be as far as on our timing marks. And then last time when I thought I had it lined up, I put that white mark on there. But right now, that is lining up uh, what would be two degrees off. Right there is starting to float. One tooth, what would have been two tooth over was when it was starting to go down or when it went down. So in between that, so basically at that bottom tooth down there should be where our white mark, oh, hold on, I'm making this confusing. <laughs> My two marks are not lining up by, they're off by about two degrees it looks like. Add the one, uh, probably three degrees off actually. Had I done that correctly the first time, like I thought I did, uh, it would be lined up perfect right now, which is actually what I was expecting it to do. So I don't know how me and Slick, Bill, whatever, missed the first time. I'm just checking it, because we're here. And there's a lot of controversy about if it was way off or way out or something. And it looks like my marks were about three degrees off. So was it off? Yes. People think this thing's off a couple teeth on the distributor. Guys, it runs too damn good to be a couple teeth off. I promise you that. So what that means is before, when I thought I had 11 degrees of timing at first, I really probably had about 14. And then as I adjusted back on it and thought I took it down to four to five degrees, I probably still had seven to eight degrees somewhere in there. So how do we fix this? Well, there's not much to really fix, guys. We're gonna try to get our white mark off of the harmonic balancer and just put a new mark that lines up where our mark is on the little pointer thing. A little lacquer thinner on a rag takes that right off. And we'll put us a new mark on. Now guys, I still always time by ear as part of my timing. Uh, because every motor is a little different and I know there's technicals and this and that uh, Ultimately you can pretty well hear when something's running happy and where we had timed it to last time I wasn't willing to take any more out of it because it wasn't running good there uh, We knew Being advanced to where it was was acting like a little too much. So again. Yeah, we had a timing light on it Yes, we still timed it by ear. Yes, I still think our timing's where it needs to be. Uh, yes, I was just off a few degrees as far as what the timing light said. I'm still not going to change it, though. I'm going to change our marks. I'm not going to change our timing. It's running amazing. One nice good mark right there. And uh, top dead zero is verified triple checked slap that unit back together and uh yeah now we now we know now y'all know now i know uh now our breather i think we're gonna mess with this i told y'all i wanted to double snor snorkel it i did not have a snorkel that matched this snorkel the last weekend out at DMH, I found this one that this snorkel matches this snorkel. Snorkel, snorkel, snorkel. So nothing too crazy here. I basically want to pick an angle about like so and figure out how to cut that out of there and get it over here. And I notice we got a little dent right in there. I'm gonna uh, ditch our belt sander off the table over to the metal fab side and then we'll bring our table over here since we're highlighting our snorkel that dent in there kind of takes away from it so let's see if we can't make slick proud and mess this up very thin metal so i'm trying to go easy on it i don't know if i'm doing any good or not a 
little bit of it out right there. I think I could live with that, guys. As far as swapping this over, I think we just got to cut this out and uh, welding and figuring it out down in there is going to be a little tricky. But luckily, that's the bottom side, which means it's hard to see. So let's do a little slicing, a little dicing. Now you guys may not believe me, but this is going to hurt me more than it hurts this breather. I love these little things for some reason. I just think two snorkels is going to be better than one. The sacrifice I was willing to make though, guys. Uh, now we just gotta trace that to that, cut it out again. That's not true. We gotta kinda pick an angle. Right there's the spot. Or right there. Basically that edge is coming right to the side of that. So we're gonna skip one, go to two, and then we're gonna look at putting that right there at the edge of that one. And however that lands is how it's gonna land. Pretty dang close right there. Got a little fine tuning to do. Cleaned her up on the wire wheel, just hold it in place and pack it in. Tacked her up all the way around. A little bit bigger gap about, uh, down here. Hell, I'll, I'll jump a gap, guys. I ain't scared. Uh, That's gonna be a lot of little just tack welding. I'm gonna tack her all up. I'm tacking around, skipping around, and then as that cools down, I go back with my grinder and their little flapper. This thingy right here, I'm going back and sanding down, uh, trying to control a little bit of the heat, I'll be honest. I ain't too worried. If you want, you can do the skip, let it full cool, do a little grinding, whatever. I don't want to be here for 12 hours working on this. Let me show you what we got going on. Uh, well, obviously I got her welded in and smooth out, but I also sanded it on this puppy. All I used was our little two inch roll locks to smooth that out. If you get down here in a kind of tight corner, because this roll lock pad is uh, 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 worn out. One, I would uh, round it, like push that over like that, where you get it kind of bent over to work her down in areas. Or a couple times I had to trim off all that extra where the little circle got smaller and tighter where I could fit it into a couple spots. And 
I used a die grinder for down on this bottom side, guys, to be able to get in there and grind those welds down there. And they're a little rougher than everything else. I don't know if y'all can see it or not in there, uh, but that's gonna be the bottom side, very hard to see. And they are still smooth out. Other than that, I ran 80 grit on the DA over everything, took scotch bright and uh, worked it down in our little indentations that we got in this custom air filter situation. And I'm pretty happy with this, guys. It's still got little dents and dings. It is not perfect. I'm not gonna finish it out any more than that right there. We just need to get some paint on it. That thing was getting after it. Who's calling me? Ain't got time for phone calls. I don't got a lot of this primer. I'm hoping there's enough in here to prime at least the top side of this thing uh, because this will help all of that look a lot better. And I need to figure us out a better paint booth. Perfect amount to get a really good coat on that thing. It's looking awesome. This stuff dries up pretty quick. Just uh, just long enough to get a call from the post office telling me they're too busy to send out my orders today that I need to come pick them up. Yeah, whatever that means. Anyhow, uh, scuff that and uh, get it ready for a little paint. All right, let's get a little black shaking up. Would you like that shaking or stirred? Hope you said shaking. Go a little light coat. Uh, don't put it on too thick the first go around with this engine enamel. We want that to dry it pretty good. I mean, maybe 10 minutes worth. And then we can lay it on thick and it should look really good. Let the first one set up, cleaned up a little bit, then come over here, another layer. Uh, what's next? Whoa! Careful! That edge will get you. This bezel we found at the junkyard uh, last weekend I was not even looking for one of these, but notice this one was in pretty good shape and ours is in a little rough shape. So we'll give it a quick polish and swap it out. Looks good on there. Looks a lot better than that beat up one. I sure hope this looks as good as I thought it would. Woo, baby! You damn right. <laughs> Guys, that looks freaking awesome. And I know Chevrolet made one similar. Uh, they put them on different cars. I'd look them up. Some of them are like, three to four hundred dollars to buy and half shipped we're about 20 bucks into this one and damn does that look good man oh man oh man i'm loving that guys i am loving that all right it is five o'clock which means we successfully stayed busy on this wagon all day uh man it's crazy i don't feel like i've been out here from i, I probably didn't get out here till eight so that's a little late start for me Either way, eight to five, put in a good solid day. Stayed busy on the wagon. I did skip over to the house to have a, about a five minute lunch real quick. And uh, yeah, man, it's crazy how day just flies by when you're having fun, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm so happy that's on there. I'm just sitting here staring at it. Got a little drool coming out of my mouth because I was drooling looking at it. Oh, hey, power steering. Uh, how's that going for us? Maybe a little on there, I can't tell. Uh, yeah, it looks like a little. 
but not a whole lot. That could still be residual from it being messy. It ain't enough to drip underneath there like it had been after you parked it somewhere, so I think we're doing good on our power steering leak too. Sweet, guys. The devil's in the details. Like that cleaner, uh, I think that just made underneath the hood look like a hundred times better. I know you're thinking all you did is swap that out. That little factory touch to it, but the little hot rod influence with the dual snorkel that can go with the, now who's calling me? The dual snorkel with the fin valve covers, but the they kind of go with the aluminum. That black is gonna match this black. It's the same color underneath here, just needs a wash and she's a little dirty, guys. I don't know. I just think it looks so much better. The aesthetics are important, obviously. We want it to look the best we can. And, uh, and like that being a cheap thing to do is awesome. But more than anything, when I say the devil's in the details is, I'm gonna be able to drive a wagon without a brake dragon. You know what I mean? So fixing that, what else did we work on? The starter, I'm pretty sure that was our issue with the crack, 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 crack hanging up every once in a while. We're charging now, guys. Uh, so more important than looking pretty is drivability. I mean, it's about time to go drive this. Uh, I do want to sample one more thing before we leave. And that's this glass here, guys. I have cleaned on that with about everything you can imagine. And I don't know if y'all can see that stuff on there. But after you scrub on it, no matter what, that stuff ends up coming back. And I don't know why. I don't know what it is. It looks like, I don't even know how to describe it. Looks like hell on glass to me. So I synced this at the parts house one day and uh, I was curious if it could maybe get some of that stuff off because I've tried like lacquer thinner, brake clean, oven cleaner, uh, different things, you name it, I tried it on there. This says it removes baked on water spots, removes coatings, road films, and contaminants, and ideal surface prep for coating glass. Directions, shake well before use, clean glass, apply stripper to applicator, scrub windshield in small circular motion, thoroughly rinse with water, wipe away glass stripper with a clean dry cloth. Seems easy enough. I'm assuming this just has some type of grit in it that's gonna actually do almost like a little sanding. Basically buff the glass out more or less. That didn't do shit. That didn't even do close to nothing. Yeah, we're pissing in the wind right here. Yeah, I don't know guys. Uh, anyone got any suggestions? Cause I don't know what's gonna take that crap off. Nothing I got. Oh, we never hooked the coil back up and made sure it was gonna start. Curve ball. Watch it not start after uh, not having that wire hooked up. I was ready to go for a cruise. I know I started it earlier, didn't I? I think I did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. You know what they say, it'll start or it won't. That new starter is nice. Alright, I'm actually going to get up underneath here and pull this for our master cylinder. Forgot about this earlier. And that right there is what I was kind of curious about, which is, does that have enough to go back? Or is that being stopped there and that being attached, holding that forward some? And I think it is, guys. That ain't no good. That right there could be our brake dragon too. Because if that was hooked up... Hold on. I'm getting confused. Oh, there's two holes. Okay, so I had it up on that one. All right. I was going to say, that ain't lining up at all, but it was on that one up there, not down here. I knew I wasn't crazy. Break torque on that. And we'll run her in. That right in there should be perfect. Yep, I like that. I'll be honest, I did not think we would have... Uh, find that because I cracked that one uh, line and it didn't act like it had any residual pressure back there on a 
on that last video or whatever maybe the video before i don't remember the last video uh but that's not what it looked like underneath here and maybe sometimes it holds some pressure and other times it don't that's literally perfect right there let's go test drive no brake noise been doing good just pulled up here to slicks we'll go with a restart 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 pretty sure uh, we fixed our problem there guys that was on the starter she's a rig now buddy no dragging brakes just belt sand the pads till they fit you know <laughs> put a new starter on it where we ain't uh hard starting and fixed the alternator that wasn't charging that left me at loves the other day she's a rig she's ready to go to austin texas now i was like what the hell does that mean guys there's a lone star roundup down there and i used to go to that every other year and the difference in doing a wheel at run or getting something half-assed drivable around town or your property is a lot different than what i want this thing to be which is if me and mama want to hop in it and go to the lone star roundup in austin texas i want to be able to drive down there pretty troublesome free and confident about that and i'm pretty confident about it now i think we've got it there uh, it was not there before it's there now uh, both internationals have been to austin texas and back and yeah just for those reasons right there i wasn't scared to drive them because we, we got to get them right i think our wagon is sitting right she's sitting tight uh, i appreciate y'all watching i'm gonna i'm gonna wrap the video up here it's driving amazing guys brakes feel good so if you're worried about the uh sanded brake pads i ain't okay they'll, they'll wear themselves in the proper shape eventually you know what i mean <laughs> that's kind of their job uh so puddingsfabshop.com uh, for that good quality merchandise i appreciate y'all being patient with us on getting it out uh, the post office is giving me a little trouble because we just flood them so hard so i apologize to y'all but i i gotta just get out what i can get out uh i'm on the instagrammer i'm on patreon we got the facebook page no i'm not giving away a ford raptor guys i don't care what you watch or who says what put fab shop is not giving away any truck besides a little s10 and there'll be videos about it if i was giving away any vehicle it would always be in a video it would not be someone with my name spelt incorrectly with four friends who's gonna be giving it away and it probably would not be a new vehicle let's just be honest yeah it's not gonna be a new vehicle <laughs> the ford raptor they're trying to give away that everyone's falling for it has like a damn england license plate on the front like come on guys anyhow uh yeah don't give anyone any of your information they act like me they they have conversations with you they send pictures of me that they robbed from our facebook and stuff guys it's wild uh don't fall for their bs um and yeah, I don't know what else to tell you. Be safe out there, kiddos. The internet's a dangerous place. Uh, do not forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. I'll see y'all next time. Hot damn, there's so much BSRE. We had to start a whole channel for all the extras. Be sure to go check out Puddin's Fab Shop if you ain't seen that baby yet. Come on!